Well, hey folks, Birds here, and uh, you know what? I guess we're doing another one of these, um, another one of these solo episode rounds. So, you know, Bonesy, Swain, they, they had their turns, now I gotta, I gotta come up with a podcast worth of material. You know, last time I did one of these, I must have spent like the better part of a week writing that, researching, just like rehearsing it, doing take after take, and... I listen back and it's just like, I hate the sound of my own voice. And so do another take and the next tape comes out exactly the same, right? Exact same thing. And then just edit. I, you know, I just, that's too much. It's too much this time. Maybe I'll do another one of those again, but this week I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call some people, right? Just call some people up on the phone, have a couple conversations, edit it down to the interesting bits. I thought it, I thought they turned out okay. Uh, little, little, little secret. I'm recording this at the end of production. So I already know what we cover. Um, so, you know, I look, it's a, it's not going to be a gaming episode. This is just a life episode, right? It's, it's a crazy mixed up world that we're all living in and, uh, it's stressful, you know, that's kind of what the last one was about. Um, but, uh, this, this time I want to talk about just, you know, just the casual stuff, uh, how you, how you take care of yourself. I, I had a, I had a week and then I had to switch gears. Let's have a birthday weekend. Let's, knock out this thing. And uh, hey, guess what? Swain just, just came in town. I just got a, a text from Bone. So I'm going to go hang out with them. And uh, yeah, we'll probably uh, probably eat food and talk about video games. But look, I think you're going to enjoy this episode. I talked to uh, a couple people you know, a few folks maybe you've heard of, but you've, uh, you've never heard from before. And then a few, they might be a total surprise. I thought it turned out okay. So, uh, hey, without further ado, let's let's jump right in. Uh, let's call up my mom on the phone. Yeah, okay, we're doing it. Here we go. Three, Three four, four, five. five. Perfect. Thank you. Natural. I guess what I'm I'm thinking is so like the th- general kind of theme for the, these conversations seems to be like coping skills and guilty pleasures and just like. Didn't you already do that last time? You did that last. That God, did you listen to I that? That to means you listened. I, I honestly, I couldn't listen to the whole thing. It was, yeah. it was like, oh my god. <laughs> you and yeah. Emily are just my harshest critics. Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, one yeah. thing that you used to be fairly high strung, yeah, and then you just mellowed out. I know uh, that was a conscious effort, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, it just seemed like. I mean, like the one for me, because I was your child and there with you was just like the customer service transaction oh, was yeah. always like yeah, I know. I've heard a stressful thing. I know. <laughs> well, like, what, like what, what, what changed? Or I guess like, why did you decide to consciously change it? Um, I guess, you know, there were a number of things like um, Jay probably was a big part of that. Um, not really understanding why I would fly off the handle for no good reason or get irritated for no good reason. Um, sure. Emily uh, is quick to point out my flaws, <laughs> and apparently that was one of them. And I, I just, and as I started to change, I just kept getting such positive feedback. I mean, it was like I looked at the world as as the adversary, and everybody was out there. Everybody that was out there was an adversary. And now I don't, I don't lead with that. And I get when I, my expectations that. Uh, that people are going to be nice and people want to be nice are fulfilled. And so it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a circle. I'm getting positive reinforcement on it. And yeah, yeah. And, you know, as you get older, well, and and there's other things too, like, you know, the living situation that led to, you know, all those feelings has no, that no longer exists. And (laughs) I I think, um, yeah, I don't think we're we're, yeah. we're revealing anything to, no. to say. Uh, I love you deeply. I love Dad deeply. Um, probably not the most sustainable uh, wasn't situation. Healthy. It wasn't healthy, and that was a big part of it. And then the way I, you know, I mean, I, I, and what I, I guess what I realized was, I have all these reasons for being negative and looking at the world that way, and I'm very well aware of all those reasons. But that's not who I want to be, and that's not how I want to be. And I can, cha- if I'm aware, I can change it. I can consciously yeah. decide to be something else. And um, I mean, I didn't used to think that people could change. And I, I mean, I they can. I mean, I'm not there. I'm not completely there. But um, yeah, people are capable of change. 
I mean, there's something to be said for the the phrase easygoing because like it implies a certain demeanor, you know, someone's got a certain vibe. But I think in general, too, like when you are just easy, like you you treat situations as easy, like I'm not going to be the problem here. Like, okay, I need to talk to this person because I need this thing. But like, yeah, it's fine. Put me on hold, whatever. Like, I don't care. Like, is it everything actually gets easier in the other sense, too, of like, this is not difficult, right? Like, I don't have any expectations. I don't really have high hopes for this. And it's like, yeah, make a phone call, see what happens. And it seems to, like, that's a reinforcement for me is that being easygoing makes difficult things easy. But I think, especially in the customer service realm, people on the other end are so um, expecting negativity and nastiness. Sure. And when you when you're nice and you're pleasant and you're sympathetic to them, they bend over backwards for you. It's amazing. Yeah. Like yeah, I'll help you out. What do you what do you need? Yeah. Yeah. Is there something in your life that still winds you up? Is there something that comes to mind in that sense? Uh I mean there's lots of little I mean there's little things, but like what? I mean, I mean you know, work stuff's interesting. Stuff. I mean work stuff. Um, you know, Really, the place where I get the angriest is on the tennis court. <laughs> <laughs> have you um Have you ever thrown a racket before? No, no, I don't get angry that way. I get, I get, I get dark and dark and you know, <laughs> yeah, and not all right, Mac and Row. Yeah, and then I explode. No, but I'm not. Yeah, I never just throw a racket, but yeah, no, I get fr- I, it's it's frustration and um. Yeah, that's that's I mean, it seems like that is generally you're not frustrated at your partner. You're frustrated at yourself. Like, no, no, (laughs) no, that's not true. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, never mind. I guess you got your tennis game figured out. (laughs) Who shall remain nameless. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's just Jay, right? (laughs) We love Jay. We're going to have Jay on the podcast next week. Is he there? Could we put him on? He would hate that. Let's let's. Is he there? Let's come back to that. That's going to be fun. I'm going to. I'm going He's to here, but I don't think he would agree to do this. Well, I'm just not going to tell him. Oh, It'll that's against the law. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing in talking with Emily that was an interesting thing that we acknowledged is that just like her and I have fundamentally different uh, wiring. Uh, she and I. Uh, thank you. She and I. Um, she and I have fundamentally different wiring. I still say if clause contrary to fact sometimes at people, and they just they stare at me in the same way I stare no at you. Idea. Yeah, it's were, not was, it's were. were. I'll Junk explain it sense, sometime. My friend. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Um, yeah, also, I feel like I've edited a lot of people's resumes recently, and it's just like back to that tearful homework desk where I learned all those <laughs> fundamental lessons about writing, and I'm just going like, cut the fat. <laughs> say that sentence out loud. Does that feel like a sentence a human being would say? Like, I try and be nice about it, but maybe I learned it through tears over the homework table. Maybe, Maybe that's what just the lesson in. Yeah. Um, okay. So where was I? So, so yeah. So if Emily and I have different wiring in that she stays busy and like her batteries are recharged in a way by like being busy. Yeah. She's got a lot of get up and yeah, go. I definitely am not that yeah. right. Like exactly. You're, you're the same way. Yeah. You live in Seattle, right? Like a sunny day is a precious thing there. But like, what are the things that you do that are not, um, I don't know, they're not productive or goal oriented. They just like make you feel good, make you feel like, okay, this weekend did what, you know, I got what I needed out of it. So we're from this list, we're eliminating organizing dirty drawers. We're eliminating cooking. Whatever you want. No, it's all fair game. Gardening. Yeah. Um, The one thing, you know, one thing I will say in the summertime that I can do that's not, not, um, productive in that way is I can take a nap in the hammock. Mm. I don't, that's the only time I can ever nap is in the hammock in the summer. And, you know, I don't think I'm running, you know, people always are, you know, are suspect of people who have got so much on their plate and they're doing, doing, doing. And, and I'm, I'm suspect of people like that too, but it's not like, it's not, I'm not running from anything. It's just, I feel, you know, what did I used to say? I do, therefore I am. I mean, I just get Mm -hmm. such pleasure out of doing things and, creating things and getting, making things nice. And yeah, you know, what can I say? Can, um, can you go get Jay and put him on the phone? All right, we'll do that. Here we go. Jay, Alex wants to talk to you. I know, just talk to him for a minute. For a minute? For a minute. What's up, Alex? Hey, Jay, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right. Other than the fact that 
we're getting screwed on our taxes by jackass. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. So um, I'm I'm legally obligated to inform you that you're being recorded right now for podcast purposes. Uh, do you consent? Do I consent? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll consent, but I won't necessarily answer everything you want. I'm, are you just trying to use my voice? I, I mean, you've already given me so much to work with. <laughs> um, Jay, real quick question for you. When you are stressed out or the world's got you down, what do you do to recharge your batteries? Hmm. Well, I would go to the beach, but I'm not usually able to do that. If I can go in the water, that takes care of a lot of things. I can surf. That's true. That takes care of even more things. So, all right. Well, I mean, like, let's say it's a Tuesday night and you're not going anywhere. Like, what's the run around? What's that? Well, like, yeah, like, uh, you can't go to the beach. I mean, I know that's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> I'll look into it. That's I don't a problem. know. What to... Yes, that is an issue. That's a good, a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you when I have the answer to that one. Oh, well, all right. Uh, that's about it. You want to put my one back on? All right. See you. All right. Um, all right. Well, Carry on. Uh, we, I got 38 seconds left before this recording uh, times out. Um, anything you want to say to my podcast listeners? Um, I am making some delicious gnocchi right now. I think this is oh, yeah, my best batch. 25 seconds. What are the gnocchi tips that you've learned the hard way? Well, I use the Thomas Keller recipe, but I forgot to download it for my master class series. So I have to, and I don't remember it very well. So I'm probably 12 seconds. Couple seconds. So, uh, yeah, don't work the dough. Don't work the dough hard. Yeah, yeah. Simple as that. All right. Thanks, Mom. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Look, okay, I know I'm not the first podcast host to call his mom on air, but, like, that was fun, right? You know, she, she's fun. I like talking to her. Um, but, hey, here's maybe a more familiar voice. I uh, had a nice chat with, uh, yeah, you might know him as Engineer Andrew. Uh, Engineer Andrew. Uh, yeah, we talked about stuff. We got the same brain, him and I. So, yeah, check it out. Do you keep a to-do list or like what, what's your system there? You, you, you're you're busy guy. <sighs> oh man. Um, kind of not real. I have like a little, a little, uh, I guess a dry erase board here next to my desk there you and, go. and I, yeah. but it, it doesn't get a lot of love. Like I'll just put the master list of things that like, this is this project I'm working on and this record I'm working on. And I just kind of cross them off when it's done. It's just for me to realize how busy I am and not to add anything else, but it's not like a daily list. You got one of those jobs where if you are super busy and every minute of your time is accounted for, that's going well, right? Like that oh, means you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that totally, I, if, if I'm busy, like, I want to be busy. That's the thing. But I, this is a great time to actually talk about this because I was just having a conversation with a buddy of mine literally two hours ago on the phone about just, just overworking. That's what I'm doing at this point almost. You said a great line the other day because it's like, I don't know, I feel like half of our, our little circle is looking for new jobs right mm-hmm. now. And so everyone's saying new jobs, 2019, new jobs, 2019. And what, what did you say? I said just, new jobs? I just put hashtag same job 20 or 2029. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like you are working your dream job, but it doesn't get different from here. Like maybe the scale changes or like you hire some people, but it's just this. It, it is. It's weird. Cause I mean, I, I definitely growing up, I did not want to be doing this. I, it wasn't even a thought of be producing music, podcasts, whatever, just working in. What audio. did you want to do when you were a kid? God, when I was a, when I was a child, I wanted to be an astronaut and that's what it was for a long time. Even like, cause my dad worked at the space center. So, oh, so I got to, I, I got to that. be around that atmosphere a lot in Orlando before I moved to Nashville. But then, you know, music got into music, wanted to play drums. My parents were like, eh, here's a guitar. Drums are loud. Um, <laughs> There you go. But, and then it was just like that one thing, like, I don't know, just, just kind of fell into that when I was about 10 years old and not even 10, not even eight when I got a guitar, but I still, I think that the astronaut thing hung around for a while. Like it was like, I was obsessive about that stuff, man. Cause you know, when your dad works there too, you just have more access to information and data. You get to go to his job and it's like, yeah, this is it. Like, I you know, I've still have this huge like fascination with space and space exploration and and all that. But um music grabbed me in a similar like kind of mystical way. And just I don't know. It, it was like this thing I couldn't fully put my mind around, but 
I won't, and I, even when you know, we think you know everything about music, there's always something new you can write, you know? I just remember like when I was a kid and probably, I mean, I still am this way, but just like obsession was the name of the game. Yeah. Like I had a interest at any given time. Mm -hmm. And even if I wasn't, you know, like working on it, I mean, I didn't know how to work when I was a kid. I was thinking about it all the time. Like as soon as the internet was like, I remember I saw Fast and the Furious when I was like 14 and then the internet was available and import magazines were available. And it was just unquestioned. It's like, yeah, I'm going to learn everything there is to learn about this over the next six months. And then it was just like, all of a sudden it was gone and replaced with something else. But during that time, it was like, that was my whole life. Like, that was all I thought about. I would just stay lying in bed late at night thinking through different configurations of things and going, oh, I need to research that some more. And then thinking about all the research I would do. And just, yeah, like to a degree that was 24-7. Absolutely. Yeah, that's just, and you know, what's funny is even things that weren't like a career I was into, like video games, for example, from a young age or even uh -huh. before then. I mean, I, my parents were like, I, I didn't have a game system till. I was probably, I, it was an N64, but it was like when the GameCube already was just like coming out or it just came out, it was like a hand-me-down. It was like a hand-me-down from my cousin. So like all I had was a computer and I wanted to play video games. Like I wanted to play Zelda. I wanted to play Smash Brothers. I wanted to play all those games. So of course I was like at nine, 10 years old, figuring out how to download emulators and run it on my dude Pentium. Oh man. I had all those ROM sites figured exactly. out. I played every SNES game. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's it. Uh, you know, and you know, it was like an old Pentium two computer with like, you know, dial up. It had dial up internet because it lived down the, uh -huh. the boonies. And so downloading, like, for example, I still remember like Super Mario 64, I think was only like 18 megabytes. And I thought that was massive. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, but I played all through it on my computer and like, I would wake up early before my parents woke up, just sneak into the computer room, download <laughs> games. Cause I was homeschooled <laughs> growing up. So it was just like, you know, my dad get up and then all I would do is I would just crash on the couch. Like I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, play some games. I was just obsessed. Just like, Oh, it, it was just like this chase. Cause I didn't have, I didn't have what well, my friends had. I had to find my own way to get it. But there's uh -huh. something about that nature of like digging your own trench, your own way to something. And I was just uh -huh. like, that's what I did. I mean, it's just such a weird thing. That has nothing to do with like how I make money or anything like that, or what my career is. I guess, you know, that just something my mind hyper-focused on. And I remember there was even a point uh, before I even moved to Nashville when I was kind of getting really good at guitar really young and taking lessons and just playing music, learning songs. I was just a child. When I finally did get a game console, I got, you know, my N64. Then, up, like, I was just a weirdo, man. I got a 64, and I ended up getting, <laughs> getting I ended up trading it to get a PS1 because I didn't really have a lot of money and work a job, but I could kind of evenly trade for PS1, which had other games I couldn't play. And I had 64 sure. and I was already still a gen behind. Then I jumped up the Dreamcast from my PS1 when uh -huh. it, after the Dreamcast already was done and dead, but there was games I wanted to play. I almost was just playing catch up on the games I couldn't, that couldn't run well on my Pentium 2 computer through an emulator. Dude. That's just what I, I did. Yeah, I was in this the same boat, man. Like, cause yeah, my, my parents made it very clear. Like, look, if you want video games, you can get a job mm -hmm. and buy your own video games, or you can go over to your friend's house and play video games there. But like you're addicted enough to screen time exactly. as it is. Yeah, exactly. And I, before video games, I was just on the internet. Like I was on the internet. I was like yeah. an eight year old child just researching like space and NASA and stuff. And so I was already just yeah. on in front of a screen all day long anyway. So when I was young, I wasn't very con like there was just an itch that had to be scratched and I would literally scratch uh, figuratively just like scratch it until until bloody of just like mm -hmm. I need to I need to explore every inch of this. I need to know all of this. And yeah, it turns out that that is great when you, you know, you get a job in an industry that requires constant learning and obsessive focus and all yeah. that. But before that, it was even just like, okay, how do I make it so I'm the one steering the ship here versus just being captured by each new obsession and, mm -hmm. you know, staying up impossibly late, obsessed with this thing Dude, night after night. That after is night. a struggle lately. I remember because I was like, growing up going to church with my parents and stuff. And this guy that was at this church that was like play guitar on stage and whatever. He was like super encouraging of me learning guitar. He ended up like giving me a guitar. I remember he caught wind from my parents or they were asking like, so how's Andrew on guitar? You know, whatever. And they're like, yeah, he's just kind of playing like game stuff. I remember him straight up just like 
one day after like church, he had come up and he's like, yeah, man, when are you going to get off that Halo game and like do something that matters? <laughs> and like, and, and I realized it had been three months since I like played my guitar in a session for more than maybe an hour. And, and that like, as a young age, like woke me up a little bit. Like I was like, well, wait, but I love Halo. And and this is so stupid. This is something I think about. I was thinking about this even yesterday. I, I was staying up, had a 10 hour work day at the studio in Nashville. Then I went out with my girlfriend got dinner, was at her house till probably about midnight. I mean, I've been also have been working with this guy from New York that flew in this whole week and just been like all just very long days. I'm very exhausted, but I can't, I come home and I'm just like, well, I haven't played Apex today oh, man. <laughs> or, yep. or, but, but I also just bought Anthem. So I'm giving that a, giving that a fair shake and seeing and whatever. And it's just like, oh, I just got this game and I've been out doing this stuff all day and I haven't played it yet. It's two 30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Dude, like we've got this, like we're in a season right now, right? Where yeah. Apex came out, Anthem came out. And before that, there was a big rush as well for like Red Dead mm-hmm. and the Assassin's Creed and yeah. all that. And like my goal for that was to just like stay away from them because I could so easily get hooked on any one I of those know. games. And I just kind of want to like let them pay and go back to doing what I would do as a kid, which is like a year from now, pick one up on the cheap on the whim and get way into it and try yeah, and talk about it with, wait, with the group and everyone's wait moved there's on. there's a slow season in Destiny and play like a nice yeah. single player. And that's, that was my thing too with Red. I haven't played it yet because of the same reason, but now I'm, I don't know if I'll be able to play it because Apex has got me like uh, hard. It's so, oh, I, <laughs> I'm trying to be careful with it because I, I, it could so easily take, fortunately, the thing with Apex is that it's so fundamentally multiplayer that that like yes. drains me more than single yes. player stuff that you can just grind out forever. Go, going back to something you were talking about, like I definitely, I think one of the things that was uh, kind of tragic about me as a kid was that like I had so much potential to learn and so much just like drive out of nowhere to learn and be inspired to be like, okay, now that I know this, I can do this. I can build the perfect Nissan, you know, Sylvia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got, I got it all worked out. I got my job figured out. Or it's like, you know, I got into coding at an early age. Like I'm going to build this game and I'm going to build this other thing. Or like, I'm going to write and I'm going to get all this stuff written down. Or I'm going to start a band and record an album. And there was this thing that always happened where it was like, I would just go and go and go. I would, my priority was never to finish stuff. And I'd hit like a decent 70 or 80%. And then something else would get its hooks in me and I would never come back to it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like one of the things I figured out as an adult was that like, I don't multitask well. I have to like, I have to develop tools to keep multiple plates spinning because I will just focus on the one thing that's got its hooks on me. Yeah. But being okay with that and kind of giving myself a pass to be like, this is what you're inspired to do right now, so ride the inspiration. But also forcing myself to go like, hey, okay, you let yourself move on to the next thing when this thing was, previous thing was at 80%. Mm -hmm. You cared at one point so deeply about it. I know you don't feel that same obsession now, but like, give it a chance. Maybe you could go back and pick up that last thing and do that last 20% and it won't feel like work because just like trust you'll get wound up again. And I feel like that was a big, that was, I don't want to say an aha moment because it's still a daily struggle, Mm -hmm. but that idea of like, look, I got to ride the wave, follow the, follow the inspiration, but also I can kind of plan in my downtime to make sure that it's not all for waste, you know? Exactly. And this is like, I guess related in the same kind of conversation too, but man, do you ever get those feelings and thoughts, like, especially like the example I have been out working all day. Like I really just should be in bed for my own health sake. I should be in bed. I had that real ass moment with, with the, the missus the other night where it was just like, I was keyed up and it was 1130 and it was like, I need to get some games in and also knowing, cause she's not going to stop me, but like, I probably shouldn't, that will just make me more manic. Yeah. I will just stay up later. I will get less sleep. It will be exactly. even worse tomorrow. I should go to sleep, but also I really want to do this. What, what? It, I think it's just, you want to feel it's, it's like, it's literally like it's a high in a way. It is. I, it is a bit of relief of just like dropping into a, an activity that engages my brain fully and there's no distractions. There's no antsiness or want to be somewhere else. Just like burn my brain out, please. So I can yeah. go to sleep. And then even like, like a game like destiny or I guess Anthem or even just any kind of MMO RPG where there's like just grind and levels and ranks and stuff. Mm. Not just like your simple mm. apex shooter where you can drop and play a game, go to bed or 
it doesn't matter. Um, this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. It's like I get on Destiny, play, going through and doing these milestones, and like I hadn't even done the, the new raid from this uh, recent DLC yet. And I'm just kind of wondering, does this all matter? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, man. I have fun. I uh, know I definitely have fun, but like yes, all this time, sure. I mean, thousands of hours into destiny thousands and and I'll, I'll double back i'll double back to halo as well thousands of hours in halo growing up as a kid but it's that constant string of cheese or wait, wait, wait what's the phrasing like the the you know you put uh, the you put the little hook yeah, of cheese in front of the the little rat or whatever and they'll chase it bait like the bait it's just like um, <laughs> i guess so but what's interesting with destiny is like destiny's got continuity to it yeah so yeah granted like every year one grind is completely irrelevant now but exactly. like there's other stuff yeah. where it's like single player games like it's like i played the shit out of far cry 4 mm-hmm. and i gr- grinded the shit out of it i'm never gonna i'm never gonna start that game again and, and i get it i get because you can compare it to tv like people sit around they watch seasons of tv they watch their their weekly sure. show and that's similar sure. but there's something different about an investment game like Destiny where it's like, it, and it, we all know this because like it becomes like a culture thing. Like it's a community thing and it's like, cool, all this stuff I've accomplished in this game and all this time, what does that matter in the grand scheme of my life? And the way I kind of look at it to make myself feel like it's okay, I'm not wasting my time. Is like, look at the relationships I've built and look at the community. I've thought a lot about this. And like, I think the reality is, is like, look, everybody's got hobbies. Everyone's got pastime. You don't need to be accountable and productive for every Mm -hmm. hour of your day. It's not good or bad. It's just a thing. Yeah. And I think the, the constant struggle, cause like, look, I fundamentally believe everyone is creative, right? There are no uncreative people. There Mm -hmm. are no uninspired people out there. You can be creative in your, in your desk job and how you do things and how you come up with stuff. Like you, there's levels of that. Yeah. You can be creative in how you wash the dishes or how you, you know, call your mom to say hi or whatever. Like there's inspiration is everywhere. I think what we got to be careful of is like the high that I get from playing a game like Destiny when I'm like on that grind and checking things off and doing this and unlocking this so I can do this. And then, ooh, what if I went with this and let me try swapping this. Aha moment, armor, weapon combo that just works. Yeah. Fully engaged. That is a perfect, uh, like that fits my brain receptors in the exact same way that making music or writing code for my own stuff it's kind of like an or exercise. drawing. Yeah, it's yeah. like they, they fit the same receptors. Yeah. But the difference is with the video game stuff, it is enjoyable as I'm doing it. There's no long-term pay. I mean, like there's the friends and all that, but like fundamentally, like I don't have anything to show for it at the end exactly. of the day. That's it, you're not putting on your resume world. that you are dredging yep. or unbroken and you put yeah. 2000 hours into a game. Like that would be the last thing you'd want to put on a resume. Unless I guess you're going to go work for Bungie or something. But. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. But, but even that it's just like, not even the resume thing, but just like my personal resume of like, and maybe, maybe this is not the same for everyone, but like, I don't know getting a certain number on some tracker emblem to me just does not have the same sense of like life pride and brief satisfaction as like, yeah, finishing an EP. Exactly. Yeah. Well, everyone has different goals in life. Like right now for me, like to make a record for me, like a, like a solo record or something where it's just me, like it is just not even a priority to me or I don't even care. Yeah. I'd rather help other people or work on my own band stuff, which is a collaborative experience. I just like collaboration, but I mean, we, we have the same challenge as well, which is that we do our jobs and then our personal shit is the same type of work as our job, which is hard to do. It's hard to work for 10 hours a day paying the bills and then turn around and work another three, exactly. not paying the bills on your own stuff. Right? You just, yeah, you get burned out, you know? I would feel more accomplishment slash, I'd just be happier or enjoy it more going unbroken, find a great team and doing comp and next season or something, gain the legend then it would be to be like in the same amount of time, like a three month season making like a five or six song, like instrumental EP or something. Like I just being a musician producer and all that, I think people on the outside, like just normal people look at that being like, like, that's a little weird. (laughs) So you'd rather do accomplish something in a video game that does not pertain to your actual career or anything than actually do something new in your career in your field. And it's just kind of a weird thought. I think the fact that you're making that choice, right? Because no one knows better than you what mm-hmm. w- what you need in your life. The fact that that's a conscious decision for you is like all I need to hear, honestly. I might not understand either side of it, but like 
that you in the cold sober light of day have thought and went like okay this is this is what i would like to do to me that is so much better than just like wanting to do the other thing but getting distracted and procrastinating mm-hmm. and you know doing the 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 hobby that other people don't understand because you're using it as a way to avoid yeah you know something that you're passionate about but you just have trouble getting started or stumble sticking with it you know yeah man it just goes back to even what we're talking about up top which is like to obsessive nature and stuff like that. Like that yeah. people like us, like that destiny is like a game that knocks on the door of your obsessive <laughs> attitude. And it's like, Hey, I got you a new present, you know? So, <laughs> you know, one, one question I think they will, I, I like, we've asked it before too, and just won't get an answer. We'll never get the answer to this question from Bungie, but like, I want to know what the team of psychologists who work at Bungie look like. Who figure out how to build, <laughs> what did they call it, investment or whatever, but like it's just there's sauce. somebody in there who, <laughs> who is looking at like however many millions of people, just little rats in cages going like, all right, I'm going to give them a drip of sugar water, but then I'm going to shock them briefly. But last time we shocked them for three seconds, we're only going to shock them for a second and a half and we're going to let them see the next droplet of sugar water. Yeah. And like, and that's part, like they have to do it. It's part of the business, but like. I think we all kind of want to pretend we all kind of know it and we all kind of pretend that that's not happening because we don't want to think of ourselves as being in this, you know, being in the grind, being addicted to something that maybe wasn't our choice because it's fun. But yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah. like you are having fun for sure. Like, I don't think we'd be doing it if we weren't having fun. I think maybe there are points maybe we aren't having fun while doing it. Like it does become like, yeah, this is like, oh my gosh. I mean, the. I mean, the last word quest, uh, I mean, it's, it was easy, but like it, that was four hours of my life. I was just like, okay, I've done all these activities before. I've definitely gotten these kind of headshot kills with the hand cannon before. I've done it. Uh-huh. I just, just, just uh-huh. give me the, just give me the damn gun. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, just, just, like, can you look at my hours logged and see that I just have done all this stuff a hundred thousand times. I don't need to do it again. Uh-huh. Just give me the gun. <laughs> okay. So, Hey, let's, let's wrap this thing up. When you're like not just tired, not just cagey, but like burnt out and frazzled and mm-hmm. like your gas tank is on empty, where do you turn to automatically? Where does your your brain just say like, grab a hold, hang on, do this? It should be sleep. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that's that that's weird. I, I end up spending more time in bed and sleeping more when I'm going through some kind of sad state in life yeah. but if life is fine and i'm just overworked and spent and my brain is dead i it's almost turns into a game of how much more can i do before i completely collapse and die do you like go until you hit the point where you just completely crash <sighs> like inevitably inevitably yes um but it, I have to get out of my house for that cuz like i work at my house i play oh, i play games yep. i play yep. games at my house i work Mm -hmm. at my house people come to me i record them here i edit i mix here do everything here um but and i can stay in that zone and like work almost indefinitely it feels like but if i get outside of my house and just go hang out with friends hang out with a girlfriend go grab a drink somewhere whatever like it's almost like now i'm out of that work zone or that play and work zone Mm -hmm. basically just where i do everything it, that's when reality hits and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I got to go home. But then here's the funny, vicious cycle. I have to come back home and walk through my studio to get to my bedroom. And then there's my- Where all your toys are. System. So, <laughs> and I'm like, yep. oh, I guess I could play a little bit of Apex. So it's just, it's, I have to get out. I have to literally met, physically go to a new place, a new location. That's what I have to do to finally check out. I've just been listening to Swain tell me I need to meditate more mm-hmm. for a long ass time. I don't do it. Nope, me either. I would like to. (laughs) There's aspirational coping skills of like, I would be healthier. I would be calmer and happier and more sustainable and better if I did this thing. But fuck that. I ain't doing this. What's that thing for you? There's a couple things. Uh, Easily, it's uh, watching what I eat. I mean, I have people coming in literally, I mean, since like maybe September, October, other than like a kind of a Christmas break or if I'm on tour, if I'm at home just working like... People are coming to me like six days a week, sometimes seven. I, I'm kind of a workaholic. So when it comes to food, I don't really prep anything. I mean, I'm literally at the house. I could just cook something, but I'm just always, I rather just work, spend time working, spend time doing this. I, I don't want to spend an hour 
and ends up being, I'm just going to order Chinese food or, hey, why don't we take a breather? Let's go grab a, grab a Starbucks drink and go to like, I don't know, Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, whatever, whatever quick thing is just around the so can get back to work. And not that I'm like, like out of, I'm not like overweight or out of shape or anything like that, but it's more of like the energy I could have yeah. if I absolutely did this and, and I completely know it. My people call me out on it. My girlfriend calls me out on it. It's just like, and, and I'm trying, but it's definitely like, it's just too easy to just go grab like a really great Chick-fil-A sandwich somewhere. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like when it's literally five minutes from where I'm living. So it's just like, yep. uh, that's definitely a thing. I, I would say also like taking time to just get off of a screen. Dude, there is a screen on literally from to the moment I go to sleep. My iPad is next to me on the bed with YouTube, but I'm catching up on my subscriptions. That's how I fall asleep every night. I guess it, I, I went out of town last weekend on for a wedding um, with my girlfriend and they live kind of in more like rural part of like Indiana, like South Indiana and farmland and stuff. And I kind of like took it as a moment to like, you know what? I, I didn't, I am purposely did not bring enough stuff to work. I'm going to just, I'm with my girlfriend. I don't even need to, so I really just can just put my phone down or just keep my pocket, just not check it. And yeah, yeah I took a weekend, did that, hung out with her family, did all the, all the fun things and sat in hot tub all weekend, basically. It was refreshing. I will say it was refreshing, but it's like, it's, it's almost the same kind of thing as my last answer. It's like, I have to kind of leave. Like geographical yeah. change has to happen for me to like change my lifestyle almost, which is kind of crazy. Well, you know what, Andrew? I don't think that's crazy at all. Yeah, good chat, right? I like that guy at Andrew. Uh, all right, this next conversation, um, another phone call. Um, but, you know, I think look, the audio quality is pretty good for these, right? Thought it turned out pretty well. Uh, this one is with my sister, Emily. She's a, she's an interesting one, man. She's, she's, she's smart. I, uh, yeah, I've, I've definitely learned a lot from her. I'm the older one, a couple years. But, uh, yeah, she's got some stuff figured out. Um, also an odd duck, you know. We're, we're both kind of odd ducks. So uh, this, was, this was a fun conversation. I uh, hope, hope you enjoy it. Hey. Hey, uh, it's me. What's up? Um, do you have a minute? Sure. All right. Well, so um, it's my week to do the 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 solo podcast. Did you listen to Bonesy and Swains? Uh, uh, I listened to Bones's, but only the part that was the intro to the episode that I had previously listened to. Okay, that's fair. Okay, you'd already heard the gaming in hell one. I mean, you yes, you listen to. Is it accurate to say you listen to every episode of Crucible Radio? That is accurate. I will say I sometimes zone out during the <laughs> heavy part related I, to the video game. I considering mean, that's uh, what I'm going. Yeah, so, so, so let's be clear here. Uh, would you describe yourself as a person who plays video games? No, not in the slightest. I mean, have you ever played a video game? So growing up, I know neighbors, friends had video game and like playing Mario Kart or something, but no. I don't do yeah, no video games or online games or phone games or any of that. Yeah. I, I, play, wait, I have is, a Domino's app on my phone that I occasionally play. Okay. But that's only when you can't get your real world Domino's fixed. Sure. So much. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, so yeah, like I don't, um, I don't know of anyone else who listens to every episode of crucible radio, like religiously every episode who listens to more than like the first 10 minutes in the last five and also is like not a desk. Like that is, I, I mean, thank you, but it's also a little bit um, creepy is not the right word, but you kind of, you, <laughs> you see what I'm getting at, right? Like, yeah, it's well, a commitment. Sure. It is. Um, listening to podcasts. I am. It's not like I'm sitting here just listening. I am a, a proficient multitasker. So it is oh, while I'm good. doing other things. And then also sometimes there's like good little gems in the middle or at the end. And so, and know. it's one of the, it's how I stay up on what's going on in your life. <laughs> <since> we don't <laughs> talk. It, it is kind of yeah, weird yeah. to like, yeah. Like I would say, you know, we're generally, we talk with say like once a month or so. I mean, it's a little I aspirational. Once every but, two months, probably pretty average, but for like two hours. Yeah, yeah, we really get into it. But I will say it is a little annoying when you've heard all of my best material that I've already used up on the show. Um, Yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, he hasn't responded to my email. He hasn't responded to this text. And then it's like, oh, apparently he's traveling for work. That's why. And so sometimes 
you know. Yeah. Well, okay. So you, I guess, so the reason I'm asking is like, you know, I'm kind of improvising my way through this birds episode and, um, and you're an interesting person in my life. I've talked about you on the show before, but I think in the context of this episode, what's interesting to me is you just get like, you do a lot of stuff without like sustainably, like for a long time, you are like, you, you, you cross a lot of things off the old to-do list. you got a lot of hobbies. Sure. I mean, oh, like just, I don't know. I don't want to dox you or anything, but like, <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you like? Can you give the list like from big down to little, like what are your ongoing commitments? Well, I guess commitments is kind of hard. So I work a full-time job, but yep. it's, flexible hours. Um, and it's a job I love. So I've on a weekend, I can go into work, but only because I'm doing that because I personally want to. Um, so I work full time, but there's some flexibility built into that. Sure. It comes and out then, to 40 hours regular work. I'm week. sure probably more than that, but uh, entirely by choice. Sure. Um, and then basically everything else is is hobbies. Um, well, okay. But like I know. have hobbies. I don't have hobbies. Like you have hobbies. Yeah. You, you get all the achievements to use a little video game parlance that you only would yeah. know if we had to mention on the show, like go down the list. I- I'm curious. Well, so before when, until recently I was a student, I was pretty involved with stuff there, but it's stuff in addition to outside of work that I'm really passionate about that I will happily spend an hour a week, every Tuesday evening doing. So like a science communication group, science policy of like, yeah, I'll organize these events because this matters to me. And this is a productive use of my time. Um, Now we're part of our local democratic socialists of America group. And so we spend probably six hours a week doing various things with them. And can I just say, like, I, we talked about this earlier, but like you and I both share a love of like showing up and doing the thing properly yeah. and there's a right way and a wrong way. And uh, it makes me happy to yeah. hear you stories of hurting those cats. No, absolutely. And I just, maybe because I do so much, I am very protective of my time or oh, I'm not going to yeah. waste my time doing something. So if there's something and it's not, you know, you don't have the shit together. Yeah. So this group I care about and the two hour meeting was really frustrating because it's not a good use of time. And so now I get to run it and, you know, get stuff done and really do that. So, so, I mean, like, would you say that the turnaround between Emily showing up to a new uh, group and Emily now being officially in charge of managing and overseeing that group, it's about two or three weeks. Yeah. And I think I was trying to be pretty sensitive about it specifically with this of like, especially given the nature of the group of like power structures and no one being in charge and really being a collective group is important. And so I don't want to be like, look, y'all are doing it wrong. You need to do it my way. But thankfully, you have to people, patiently trick them into thinking it's their idea that yeah, they're doing it and wrong. Like, we're all going to benefit if this two hour meeting, we spend just one sure. hour getting shit done instead of sure. talking in circles for two hours. Um, so yeah, I kind of feel it out, but people seem to be very happy (laughs) to have my, uh, order, but yeah, so we spend time doing that. We spend time doing education things. So going and watching a documentary and then discussing for hours afterwards, uh, we've been doing on Saturday evenings, cooking food, feeding homeless stuff through a church. So things that I'm doing because I care about and are a productive use of my time and, hobbies but not something that's draining on me well i mean like the hours start stacking up but like okay you got some hours every week for that stuff and then you've got like you take a rigorous approach to your social life as well right like maybe 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 like i know you just moved so like maybe we'll just talk about like before you moved but like yeah but i'm planning i yeah but it's all planning so like yeah, I'm absolutely a planner and we share that in that like it will be structured in order and plan. So like we had a, a standing Sunday night TV night and every Sunday and I can plan around that or we're going to do this. I'm not great at like a drop of a hat. You know, if I'm home in my pajamas and it's seven o'clock and someone's like, hey, want to go to the show? It's like, meh, <laughs> not, sure. you know, I didn't have an accountant for that. So, um, yeah, and we would go to trivia every Tuesday and do this every Thursday and that. But it was a 
stuff I can plan around. So. Okay. Well, yeah. and then you've got, you've got your own, and I don't want to talk about just like the recreational stuff, like, like podcasts or watching TV. We'll get to that. But like, <laughs> then you have like your other hobbies and it was just like, yeah, like last time or two times ago we talked, it was just like, yeah, I took up woodworking, right? You want a spoon? Yeah. I'll make you a nice spoon. You want a tamper? Like, can you just like <laughs> lightning round through the list of active or semi active or like get back to them at some point hobbies you've, you've participated in? Well, so knitting is a big one, but that's sure. like, I just finished a blanket, but that's also, okay. So knitting gotten into carving things, wooden things. So spoons and tampers and little knickknacks and stuff. Got a um, I made some like cool little shrinky dink things as a gift for people a while back for the holidays i made a bunch of random ornaments pretty much anything crafting i say you crafted all of the like typically phd defenses don't require a large (laughs) like they don't have goodie bags they don't have a huge crafting component but like yeah i went to go see your phd defense and it was like okay here's everything that she's been working on and then here's all the other projects she's been doing in support of this event oh it's a keychain bobble of like a virus structure or yeah yeah. but i mean i enjoy that stuff and okay so those things i mean and then cooking and baking and all of that Yes. Which are crafts in a way, hobbies. Sure. Um, Make stuff. Yeah. Making some pins for our group. Pretty much anything that interests me that I'm like, oh, I like this. I think I could do it. So I, you know, I'm going to go for it and do. But um, yeah. So, well, so then, then you yeah. have like purely recreational entertainment <laughs> things like watching TV shows or listening to podcasts or whatever, but you're not fucking around with those either. Like I, you just have a system. Like when one, one thing that's been frustrating is like, I want to recommend a podcast to you and it's like, Oh, you should listen to this episode. And you're like, well, either it's a good podcast or not. Um, I'm going to start with episode one and I'll get to that episode when I get to it. And it's like, why, 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 why yeah. are you going to go back and listen to the early stuff? I mean, well, yeah. And I think part of it's like my personality. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to commit to it. And yeah. if it's not worth me committing to it, then it's not worth me doing a little of it. And that's pretty true with a lot of things. Like I'm not going to half-ass it, whether it's whatever or listening to a podcast. Um, and so that's also like, yeah, if I'm going to get into something, I'm going to do it. Um, but with all that stuff, it's also like, and maybe it's a skill almost to a fault of multitasking. So I'm listening to a podcast while I'm at work or while I'm knitting, I'm watching this movie or while I'm cooking, I'm watching this TV show or listening to that episode or something. So it's a lot of stuff. If it were just like the time added up consecutively, but when you layer it all on top of it itself or each other, <laughs> it, it more logically fills a day. I, um, it's interesting too. You are in like a committed relationship as well. Um, can, can we say his name? That, that might out you. That might be, he's got a, he's got an interesting name. Um, let's call him, um, I don't know. You have a nickname for him? No. Uh, Scrappy. Well, did, didn't I have a nickname for him? Yeah, I mean, that was bad. No, Scrappy is the name of the dog where he works. So that's perfect. Oh, perfect. All right. So, so like, that's the thing, like, because I, you know, over the years, like, it seemed like dating was never really, you know, it just wasn't a priority, right? You were focused on all your other things and like, you know, here and there, but, you know, kind of just, you know, wait for it. And then Scrappy came along and like, I, I, I've met him. He's a, he's a fascinating human being and I do enjoy his company but I think also it's worth calling out like he slots into Emily's <laughs> unified system for life well enough that like yeah he fits into this you can have a sustained relationship that is um I don't know it just yeah fits with the rigorous planning and multitasking that is every day yeah yeah totally and I think like he's into his things as much as I'm into my things, but his are much more singular things. And it's like, we'll do this one thing exclusively for three hours every night, whether it's music stuff. And so for me, it's like, how do you find time to watch all these movies? And it's like, well, while you're doing your music for 20 hours a week, I've now watched all that while I was knitting and making dinner or whatever. Yeah. Well, so, okay. So, so let me just ask this, like an average, Average week, do you ever just have an off night? Just like, I'm not doing 
anything. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to watch TV. Like, would you say like one a week, two a week? It, no, I'd say less than that. It, and it's usually like, you know, stuff in the news as horrible as it is. I think I've toughened up enough to not let that bring me down. Cause that would just be too much, but it's yeah. usually like, uh, not even a personal thing, usually just an annoying work thing and usually independent from people, but uh, you know, an experiment didn't work or something like that, where I, it turns out I wasted my time on something. So that sort of thing pisses me off. And it's like, yeah, I need to <laughs> do my thing and not do other things. Oh, so I, one thing that's fascinating to me is you on vacation because like, especially like when we're at mom's house, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. you just like, you just hibernate and well, like, I think there's, there's kind of that, like, there's an understanding that like, you can't really catch up on sleep. Like sure. you can get well rested again, but if you're running that far behind on sleep and you crash, it's just crashing, right? Like you're not, yes. you're not getting no, that sleep day absolutely. back. That being said, you will just straight up like sleep for 12 hours and <laughs> clean out the fridge and just like. Yeah. Fully recharge the batteries. Well, and I will say that was much more like college, Emily, of not sure. having that time to be balanced healthy. I think now, and I think I'm much more balanced and I don't need that. Like, thank God it's vacation. I can sleep for a week straight because I and granted. I'm no longer a student. I don't have all these crazy commitments. I can choose to spend my time. And, and so thankfully my life is balanced enough that I don't need that crash. But yeah, that has yeah. definitely been, and maybe that's why I'm so structured and protective of my time now is from just wearing mm-hmm. too thin in previous times of life. Oh, well, I mean, there's like, I, I don't think there's anything you can teach me because I think I know it. I think what I wish is there's certain things I could like take notes on from your brain and just have installed into my brain. But like, you know, we're just, we're just different people, but I, yeah. you know, for the, for the sake of, uh, you know, having a podcast, like, I think one of the things that, um, one of the things that I really admire and I I want that you have is just how sustainable the whole operation is, right? Like, I mean, you just said it, right? Like you don't have that. Cause like, look, I I get manic, right? Like I'll go on a manic streak and get a fuck ton done for two weeks and then be useless for a week. Um, and it's, it is a way to operate, but it's not particularly enjoyable for anyone. I mean, how do you, how do you keep from blowing it? Well, and I think that's our like chemistries are just inherently different yes. and in, and our, and how that kind of manifests in our personalities. I think I'm pretty even keel. Like I never deviate mm-hmm. too far one way or the other. Yeah. Maybe that's bad sometimes, but that's just who I am. It um, certainly is entertaining to be yeah. uh, bipolar, but I'm not, I'm not claiming to be bipolar, but I definitely have manic and depressive episodes. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's fun to watch and fun to ride along four times sure. of it, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Um, I also am like, you know, we both are, but coming at this from a, a pretty privileged place, I have a job I love that doesn't cause me stress or anxiety. And I make enough to support myself comfortably enough. I don't have pets. I don't have kids. I don't have financial issues. So I'm able to, you know, live a pretty comfortable life within my means. And so, you know, take all those stressors out of it and insecurities and it's much easier to, to have a, a balanced, healthy life. Yeah. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother thing. Well, so I, I think I, I would love to do, uh, and I don't know if our audience would love to do it, but I would love to just like (laughs) talk through that stuff. Cause I kind of used you as like an outsourced moral center from time to time. And you've really thought a lot about a lot of this. We're thinkers, us, um, last name people. Um, (laughs) let me, let me ask you this. You have figured out some stuff that you take advantage of to keep your operations sustainable night after night, week after week. Like, how do you, how do you cope? Well, how do you recharge the batteries now? Well, part of that is, Well, I'm really organized and I, I mean, I have my life super structured and I write lists and I put stuff in my calendar. And so by doing that and by building this life that works for me, I rarely am in the point where I need to, you know, I'm overwhelmed and I need to shut down and start over or do that that sort of thing. Like I struggle because it's like, 
on one hand, that sounds so luxurious to just go like, oh, it is Wednesday night and I need to do this and this and then I can do that. Like, and yeah. for like almost everything I do, like I just, I, I'm almost the opposite of like, I want to give myself freedom to go like, okay, here's what absolutely has to be done tonight. But for everything else, like, what are you feeling? Right. Like just be able to go with the mood instead well, of and feeling I obligated also to do something. Absolutely. will bail on things of like, yeah, I know I committed to this, but I, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's not worth my time. And so yeah. absolutely. I'm like, I just feel shitty today and I want to go to bed at nine o'clock. And so, yeah, I'm going to miss out on that meeting and that's fine. You go to bed at nine o'clock. Oh yeah. So no, I, I mean, it's gotten a little later, but yeah, I try and be in bed by nine thirty, read, <sighs> asleep by like ten thirty, and I wake up at seven. So I sleep a ton. But I that is I absolutely impressive. hate being tired. Like the thought of being tired at work. Uh, we have meetings or conferences, and seeing people doze off and like that head nod uh, is uh-huh. you know I remember feeling that in high school, and just being so miserable and being like I don't ever want to feel tired. This is so. I just hate that so much. And so for me, sleeping a lot is like, and again, I don't have to worry about putting kids to bed or doing any of that or whatever. And I don't know how I would, I don't know how I could cope with having to give up some of this time that goes to myself and my partner's on the same schedule because yeah. he wants to go early and wake up early. <laughs> when I don't sleep as much, I'm far less put together and it, it throws off everything. And I just, I don't oh, like that. I mean, completely, you know, it, there's like the, the emotions coursing through me right now because I think like I've definitely come to realize that like the amount and the quality of the sleep I get is like it's everything. Like yeah. everything about how I feel, about how much I get done, about how focused I am, about how like uh, just like I'm able to think like, oh, time to do this and then let's just do this and then after that, let's do that. Or just like the quality of, of like love I put into my relationship or all the other things I want, like it all just comes oh, down yeah. to, did I get a good night's sleep? And yet, and yet I like my, my, my demon is just like, it's time to go to bed and I'm in bed, but I want to like think about some stuff. So let's go think about some stuff. And I think my plan now is like get enough sleep until I get old enough that I hit that age where you just don't need to sleep as much. Sure. And so it's like my requirement has dropped down, but no, I, I mean, you're completely right. It makes, it makes perfect sense. I want that. I just don't want to go to sleep. I want to stay up late and play with stuff. Yeah. Well, and Ugh. yeah, for me, it's enough of a, I don't know. There's nothing I want to do badly enough or stay up to do that won't be there tomorrow. I don't play games. So it's not like, oh, if I just, I know. you know, my knitting yeah, will be there game. tomorrow, my whatever. Yeah. And rarely is it worth it. And then reading at night. I mean, that whether, oh, yeah. oh, you yeah. know, that just puts me to sleep. I, I think, I think we're, we are both, and I think we're a little unusual in that regard, but like, yeah, like growing up, I read every single night to the point where like I was reading faster than like mom would get me books. So yeah. just like reread the same books. But like, I think that is one of the more remarkably healthy things that I do and that we have in common is it's just, it's understood. I'm going to read a book and I'm going to fall asleep reading because it's just like the easiest yeah. drop off into sleepy time. Totally. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. And I think going back to like, how do you recharge or stuff? Um, yeah. Like all these things to me are like all my hobbies and stuff are things that are relaxing and enjoyable. And so yeah. usually like the, it, you know, it was a bad day at work. I'm just going to sit and watch a movie and maybe not, or maybe not. And that is true. not that different from me having a great day at work and being like, Oh, I'm going to knit while I talk to my friend on the phone, you know? So it's kind of like the things that, I enjoy doing are the things that give me comfort and energy and all that. That's true. Well, it, it's fair to say that like that list is going to be different for different people oh, for what does that, yeah. because there's like stuff that's like relaxing for you on your list of like, Oh, I'm going to like see friends for a Sunday night TV watching. We're just like, like the social pressure, or, like the stress of planning or like waiting all day to get ready, make those things as much of a drain as yeah. they are a joy. Oh yeah. And I, I'm, I'm just very low key to everything. So going out to meet people, yeah, is not a, not even stressful is a pretty low effort thing that I have to commit to or get ready for. And so I don't know if that even really, I mean, you've got it figured out in a way where it isn't that positive for you. 
Like, yeah. It's regular. It's it's consistent. You enjoy the good parts and you minimize the stress yeah. of it. So it and like, yeah, exactly. And all the things I do and we do, I, I'm rarely doing something reluctantly. If And that's, I think, a big part. Hmm. If I don't want to be spending hmm. my time doing it, then it's not worth my time. Or if something is going away I don't like, I'm not going to, I really try and not complain or bring negativity in and forever, however hippy dippy that sounds. If you don't like it, either do something to fix it or try and get it out of your life. Oh yeah. And like, and complaining for the sake of complaining. And I just, it's so toxic to me and I don't do it. And I really can't have that in my life. And my partner doesn't do it. And whether that's something that has changed or something that was part of him anyway, but if there's something that's not a good fit for me and it's, it's not worth it, then I, I don't do it. Or I say, look, here's my issues with it. You know, and we'll say we debrief. It's not complaining. It's like running down what happened and you can get out whatever you want. It's not just complaining for the sake of it. And it's like, here's our issues with this. How can we do this better? Or how can we improve this? How can we fix this? And really trying to do that. I've met a lot of folks where it's like, if something goes wrong, like conceptually, they need to think of it in terms of having someone to blame, like who messed this up or how did I mess this up? Like there's a culpability that's required for that. And I think, um, yeah, I think we're definitely both the type where it's just like, you know, like who cares, right? Like even, even if someone did maliciously do something, it's just like, okay, like that's, that's who you are either. Like, I'm not going to try and change that, but it's just like, look, we're all in this together. This can be pleasant as possible, or it can be a mess. Well, like, let's just do the best version or not. Do yeah. It, and right? the whole thing of like, especially for something that happened, it's like, look, it happened. So like, I got a speeding ticket back in December, my first one ever. And oh, it was so annoying. I know. Outlaw. Oh God. it sucks. <laughs> and it was just like, ah, oh, this sucks so much. And I so pissed, but it's just like, this can hang over me for weeks now, months now, yeah. or whatever, I will pay it. And that's it. And like, yeah, it just, sucks. Yeah. And, but just try things that happened. And I, sometimes my partner will get that of complaining of something of not going and just complaining. And it's like, look, I know it sucks, but you complaining about it, like you bringing this just negative mindset into you that now permeates everything else is not going to change or fix or yeah, oh, it just makes it a thousand happened. times worse. And so it's like, yeah. I know, but it's just like, kind of not suck it up and move on, but like, accept it. If there's something you can change, I'm much better at the speed limit now. But like, yeah, and just kind of move on as best you can. Um, well, it's like it's 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 taking ownership, right? Yeah. Of like, okay, you got a speeding ticket. That sucks. You probably shouldn't have been speeding, yeah, or maybe yeah. it was bullshit. But like, but whatever. But like, you don't own it yet. You own it when you go. Okay, I need to. Okay, I need to get a stamp to put on an envelope to put the thing in, put the check in to go pay the thing. Or I got to fill this thing out, and I got to like make sure that I'm gonna do it different. Like you turn it yeah. into the future instead of like just having it as this unresolved anchor in your past. That um, that yeah, I don't like. I like I've been in a position now where I manage other people. And, um, there are situations where it's like, okay, I need you to acknowledge that you fucked this up. Like, I don't feel like you see this as you made a mistake. I only need you to acknowledge it though. So we can figure out how we're going to avoid it in the future. That's it, right? Like it's not personal. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And that's, yeah. And on a even personal level of like with me and Scrappy, there's things of like, and you know, I dealt with this in other ways with, a a stepmom of like things aren't working or we're clearly doing things that are upsetting each other. And we know that. And it's like, let's literally get this on writing of here's the thing that it doesn't work. And it's easy enough to not say things this way or to fix that thing or to not make that comment or whatever. And it's like, I mean, I just putting things in writing, making those lists and being like, here's the, the singular thing that is the cause of this issue, the source of this issue let's acknowledge that and just say, oh, we're going to make an effort to not do this. And it's, <laughs> you know, so, it's just occurring to me that, that there are people listening to this who think that we're fucking lunatics. Oh, I know. My structure and my like over the top logic that I bring to everything, like emotion doesn't play into my decisions. It is stacked. And I know that that is 
so incompatible with a lot of people. And I absolutely get that. You, you know, it's interesting. Like, I feel like that's one of, I mean, I'm sure Scrappy does too, but like, I feel like that's one of the things where I can be helpful to you. Oh yeah. Of like, you've got unresolved emotion and just like, yeah, just let it out. Like, let me be the analytical one in a moment yeah. or like tell you how you got to walk this line. But like, yeah, you're not a robot. You just yeah. uh, find it most convenient to operate like one a lot of the time. Well, and it that has absolutely also been the source of not issues, but yeah, I mean, sure. of like, it's yeah, like being friction. cold yeah. and heartless and however you're going to say, I'm like, yeah, it does seem like that. And that's something I have to be aware of, of like how I'm not just coming off as this, I don't know. I think if I could boil it down, I think like, cause like the way we run our operations are remarkable because like, we just got different brain chemistry. Like it is what it is, but I think we have something in common, which is that we both are well aware of the fact that it's possible to have an idea in your head for something that doesn't exist and to be able to make it real. Yeah. Right. And like there are limitations to that. And a lot of the times you have to reconcile and go like, okay, this is not possible. I thought it maybe it could be. Um, but if you don't know that it's not possible, that if you've got an idea in your head and you want it to be real and you're not doing the work to figure out if it's possible then to try and make it possible, it's on you. Like you don't get to complain about it, yeah. right? Like that doesn't help people in the moment, right? Sure. Like I don't think that's advice. It's just a dispositional thing that like we've had enough cases where it's like, I don't know anything about this, but I'd like to know more about this. So I'm going to learn more about it. Like I was yeah. talking with Andrew a minute ago and it was the same kind of thing. Like that is tough too, because it's like, look, I'm a uh, fairly like comfortable financially, like white dude in America, you know, like our parents gave us a decent life growing up where I look at things and it's like, why is this an issue? Just like crash yeah. through it. Just do all the things. And having to realize like, it doesn't work like that for everybody, right? Yeah. Like everyone has the option, but it can be a hell of a lot easier for some people than others. And having to kind of measure like, oh, well, if you have a problem, just go talk to them, right? Like just go figure it out. Yeah. And it's still good advice, but needing to like temper that, not everyone starts from the same point yeah. for how easy it is to make things real. No, absolutely. And I think, yeah, I think I both have a lot of empathy for people and also be so clueless and things that people struggle with that for whatever reason, my brain, it, I do not have an addictive bone in my body. Like there is nothing. Yeah. And Lucky so, you. <laughs> yeah. And for whatever reason that just like, so that's something I struggle with of like, how can you like just have the willpower not do it? And for me, I, can struggle with it, just getting that. And I'm so like fundamentally aware of that and all these different things that play in. And it's something, it's kind of this inherent bias in me that I've really been struggling with of like, well, just don't be addicted to things. And I know how absolutely <laughs> wrong that is on every level. And it's still yeah. those things that I have to like talk myself through of like, no, that's not, it, it, yeah, it's easy for you because it's easy for you. Because I definitely have an addictive personality, right? Like I've had my own struggles. And I think like one thing I'm starting to realize as I get older is it's like there are pros and cons to like major personality level things, right? Like having an addictive personality has got some real downsides to it, right? And uh, makes a lot of stuff difficult. But absolutely there are big bonuses to it. Like yeah. I think the same thing that like keeps me going and pushing a button that gives me pleasure over and over and over, even when there's negative consequences. That's the same thing that's like, okay, I don't know anything about this topic, but a month from now, I'm going to be, I'm going to have like master level understanding of all of this. I'm going to catch up on this thing way too fast. I'm going to like ignore everything else to absolutely like take over this thing I care about. Like it's not good or bad it's just like a default set yeah. of wiring that can have pros and cons and that like you know if you're living in a society with people who are different with you you gotta like accept that people yeah. just have fundamental starting points that are different that you can't change but that also you can there, there's value in each of them there's pitfalls oh no them. i cannot and that's where i'm like thank god people aren't like me i mean and that's where i'm like <laughs> or you know i don't think a good thing there's, cre I mean, I'm creative in a certain way, but thank God there are artists and people who think about this stuff yeah. and like, like maybe I should go move to some Northern European country and like where that's more of the norm, but it's like, mm -hmm. no, a, a society made up of people like you and me is not, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to live there. 
I don't know if I've ever really in my life met someone who is like me. Like definitely you and people in, you know, with our set of genetics are probably the closest I've ever come. Yeah. But like, I have this simultaneous thought of like, if I could find another birds out there, we would be fucking unstoppable. Or if I found another birds out there, we would fucking kill each other. We wouldn't be able to stand each other. Like it's not fun to deal with. It's just fun to do and is useful sometimes. Yeah. No, and I have a a friend from school who is European, who you know, um, and like Uh he, we personality wise were so similar and got along so well. And I realized like how off putting he was to other people because he'd be (laughs) so blunt. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess I have a bit more tact than him, but it's like, oh, if this is how people see him, I'm probably just as abrasive and annoying. Oh, <laughs> so it's dude, like, let me, let me, let me tell you. So like, you know, dad came to visit for, yeah. like, it was nice. Like he was here for like four days and like, he is the easiest house guest in the world, but it's just fascinating to see, like to listen to him and to watch him and realize how many of the same mannerisms I share with him and not even realizing that they're the same. And then sometimes like, seeing some of them in public and going like, Oh God, is that what I'm like? Yeah. Like, you know how like he just has trouble sometimes controlling the volume of his voice. Uh Like he just (laughs) says something like unreasonably, like unnecessarily loud in public and then realizing, Oh my God, I'm the exact same way. Is that what like and cringing when he does it and going, Oh my God, the people cringe when I do it. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, I got 20 seconds left on this recording. Uh, Emily, thank you so much for, for talking. This was fun, right? Yeah. Like we could do a podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, like, the, that's too much work the, and not, not enough, not enough benefit for, <laughs> to bring my life. I'll do all the work. You just hop on the phone okay. and this pair of mutants will talk through things and we'll figure things okay. out. Okay. Sounds good. I can do all that. Right. All right. Well, good talk talking. Soon. Love you, kid. All right. All bye. Right, bye. I mean, at this point, basically, you're on board for what this episode is, or you're just not listening anymore. You hit pause and you come back next week. That's fine, right? You know, we don't, uh, I don't need you to love it, right? I find it interesting. I mean, I think we have, we have good chats, my sister and I, but, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, it's not for everybody. I get that. I, our, our ethos on the show has always been like, look, let's make something that we like, something we'd personally enjoy listening to. And uh, yeah, the audience will be people who always share the same taste. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I sure did. This next conversation is with a friend of the show uh, named Anklet. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not his name. My parents didn't name him Anklet, but like, you know, like my name's Birds, right? His name's Anklet. Um, anyways, yeah, you know, he's a... He's a, he's a younger guy, right? Like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm old, man. I'm, I'm, well, I shouldn't say old, it's relative, but in the gaming world, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting up there. Um, but Ankle, you know, he's, uh, he's just figuring stuff out. He's going to school, he's getting a job and, uh, yeah, he's kind of figuring out what works for him. I think he's got some good insights. So, um, yeah, without any further ado, uh, yeah, let's talk to him. Hey birds. I don't, tell me if I've told you this before, but like. At some point in what has become our friendship, um, the wires in my brain got crossed. And now every, like literally without fail, every time I think of your internet name, the song Santa Baby starts playing in my head. <laughs> and I just hear ankle baby coming on with something, a tree. I don't know the words to it, but like, yeah. So there you go. That I don't know what you're going to do with that, but. I've, I've never been called ankle baby before, but. Um, Angle baby, look, <laughs> we're in different places in our lives, right? Like it was my birthday yesterday, I just turned 34. Happy I'm birthday. old. Thank you. And you're definitely not 34. You're like in school doing things for the first time. And yet we find ourselves in a very similar situation right now, which is that we're both on that job hunt. Mm. You know, this is not my first rodeo when it comes to that stuff, but I don't think it ever really gets like you, you, you kind of know what to expect a bit better, but it doesn't ever really get easier of just like trying to do that. And we've got all the other stuff. You just like, yeah, there's just a lot of plates to spin, man. That's just stressful. It's a lot of plates to spin. That's, that's how I've been referring to it for like the last couple of weeks with, you know, uh, my, all my personal relationships. I've been referring to it as spinning plates because it really does feel like sometimes you've got these things that are moving really, really fast and there's a lot of them. And they're these very, very delicate things. And mm-hmm. at any moment, they could drop and just shatter. Yeah. I mean, I've got this really bad habit of, of sitting down 
uh, to work on something, say it's like a, like the most recent thing I had to do was I had to like write a paper. Yeah. And I'm writing this paper and I'm, I'm, I'm getting distracted because I'm getting up and I'm working on another assignment. I'm getting up and I'm cleaning my, my apartment. I'm getting up and I'm making food for tomorrow. And I've kind of got this habit of tricking myself into being productive in other ways to procrastinate. It's not the worst coping mechanism in the world, <laughs> I don't think at all. But what it leads to is, you know, sure, I might have food for tomorrow and a clean apartment and, you know, some other work done on that other assignment. But in my head, I'm freaking out because I'm not thinking about one thing. I'm, I'm doing four things at once. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest lessons I've learned is that you you hurt yourself a lot by jumping into as many things as you can that you enjoy. If you, yeah. if you over encumber yourself with things you're really, really passionate about, it's, it's going to feel awful when you, you are split between all of those things and you can't deal with them passionately like you want to. And I mm-hmm. think that's a lot of how we kind of work our, you know, our jobs and our lives is we say, I really, really want to do this thing. And I really enjoy this thing. I'm curious, you know, like you, you strike me as somebody who, you know, you've got, you've got a rich inner life. You've got um, limited surface area that you kind of show the rest of the world. I mean, you know, we hang out and chat or we'll play video games together. But I feel like, you know, for everything I know about you and kind of like my read on you, I get the feeling there's there's a lot there that I don't know. But what I'll say is, I mean, from the outside, it kind of seems like you're keeping your shit together. Like you're in a stressful program, you're on the job hunt. Like I just remember when I like I was a fucking disaster crashing my way through that stuff the first time. It seems like you're doing okay. I mean, would you characterize it as that? Um, that's that's a very interesting question, and I'm honestly just flattered that you see it that way because uh, my my internal monologue or dialogue at any time is uh, like those spy movies where they're like dancing and like trying to like dip and dodge through like the laser fields to like. <laughs> <laughs> get to like some like prize door, but the the hallway just keeps getting longer and there's just more lasers. That's kind of how I feel. I mean, do you think you have your shit together? So I guess I guess the way I would interpret that question is I'm not spiraling. I'm not I'm not ruminating and I'm not moving downward at at a pace. Cause that's how I would feel. That's how I would characterize whether or not I have my shit together. I'm yeah. I'm staying in one place. Whether or not that place is kind of, as you say, somewhere I'd want to be is a little bit up to interpretation, but I don't know. I feel like there's a big difference between moving somewhere and being stable. And I wouldn't say that you can ever truly have your shit together, but you can be stable sometimes. What is it that you do that keeps you, keeps you going, that keeps you from feeling like I can't keep doing this, right? One of the things that I think helps me act and operate every single day, I've got this one question running in my head. And that's what happens if things go right? Like, we often spend like so much time thinking about like, oh, tomorrow, it, it's 10 a.m. I've got, how am I going to get up tomorrow and, and do this? What happens if this works? Like, what happens if I get up tomorrow and everything's okay? I can give you a very specific example. There was a project I was working on for a course and it was in, and it was an incredibly competitive course. There were there were teams and they were all kind of like bumping up against each other to make sure that their projects were better than others. And it was all in a domain that I hadn't really studied before. And I had this giant load of imposter syndrome and there was a weekly deadline where we had to stand up in front of the whole class, present everything we had found like we were experts. And I remember feeling anxious like I hadn't in a very long time. And I got mm. through it by, you know, waking up in the morning and feeling awful, feeling nauseous and thinking, okay, what happens if it goes right? What happens if I get up there and I present and it goes well? What happens if this project comes together? What happens if, the, if this presentation goes well? I don't know if it will or it won't, but... By having that question, it's I'm not going to suffer it twice. Hmm. I'm not going to make the lead up miserable and then get there and have it be miserable. I might still get there and it might bomb. And that presentation might just go so south 
that I, afterwards I feel awful, but I need to get there. Like you need to get to those bad moments. And if you see them coming, it, it just makes it so much worse because you feel like you're this deer in the headlights. That is interesting to me because I was just like, I'm the opposite, man. When I'm freaked out about something, I do literally the exact opposite, which is like, all right, what's the worst case scenario, right? Like I go up there, I forget everything I'm going to say. I um, I stumble over my words. Someone asks me a question. I can't think of an answer. I, you know, everybody laughs at me. I pee my pants. Like I go through that and then go like, okay, like big fucking deal, right? Like I still have a job. I still have a home. I still have a wife. I still have food to eat. I still get to go home and take a shower. I'm going to be okay. And I need to play through the catastrophizing to realize that like this situation just doesn't have the potential to hurt me in the way I'm allowing myself to fantasize it might. And if, if there's anything I think I can leave you with, it's that whether you're an optimist or a pessimist, the best way that I've, I've found to trick my brain to get through pretty much anything is to break it down into the specific event to put like brackets on, if it's a presentation, that's five minutes, like a five minute thing, maybe a 10 minute thing. Um, and there's going to be a before and there's going to be an after. And I yeah. use that question. What if it goes right during the before? And then huh. I just need to get there into that five minutes. And I just need to get there, but there's always an after. And that also helps me get to that thing is knowing that like, as soon as that's done, I'm out the other side. I don't really have to worry about getting that done. I've just did it. Or I don't have to worry about that going bad. It just did. Or I don't have to worry about that going good because it did. Like, I'll know. Yeah, man, that's good insight. You know, that he's a smart kid. He's going to go places. I, you know, you could hire him, right? He's on that job hunt if you need, um, what do you do? It's like, uh, like video design, motion graphic design. You know, he made like lots of, he made like the transition videos, like little intro, outro bumper things that you see on the Crucible Radio YouTube channel. He's good at me. He knows what he's doing. So, um, yeah, if you're a, I don't know, if you're in Canada and you got some work like that, throw an anklet's way. Um, just, yeah, send us an email, crucibleradio at gmail.com. We'll pass it along. And, uh, hey, let's take a moment here to give a shout out to our sponsor that makes this, this weird show uh, happen uh, this week. Support for today's show comes from HelloFresh. It's the meal kit delivery service that delivers step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. The recipes only take around 30 minutes to make, and HelloFresh lets you spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and more time doing what you love. I mean, it's kind of what we're talking about here, right? Plus, they've got three meal plans to choose from, including classic, veggie, and family. There's something for everybody. Look forward to your HelloFresh delivery. Knowing dinner just got that much easier. Um, I I have tried this HelloFresh, and I gotta say, look, I love cooking. I you know it's a it, that's my break, right? It's my little bit of downtime. Um, you know, peel myself away from whatever screen I'm looking at, and yeah, you know, go talk with the misses, go tidy up a little bit, take a breather, and and kind of enjoy the evening. I like to cook. You know what I don't like is going grocery shopping. I need to go grocery shopping today. I, I'm not in a rush to do it. And I got to figure out what I want to eat this week. It's, it's a whole thing. HelloFresh just makes it so simple. You've got all the ingredients you need. You got the right amount so you're not stuck with, oh, three quarters of a container of Greek yogurt that you're not going to eat. I, I know we've used that example before, but honestly, I've got Greek yogurt just rotten in my fridge right now. You make it so simple. And guess what? The food is legit. This stuff is tasty. I have, um, I've definitely come back to some of these recipes because I uh, just couldn't get enough the first time around. So look, it's really, really simple for a total of $60 off. That's $20 off your first three boxes. Visit HelloFresh.com slash Crucible60 and enter the code Crucible60. That's HelloFresh.com slash Crucible60 and enter the code C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E-6-0 for 20 bucks off each of your first three boxes. Thank you, HelloFresh. All right, let's, uh, let's keep moving. This, uh, this last conversation, another phone call, another, another close personal friend of mine. Uh, this is my friend Tiffany. We work together. Um... And uh, yeah, you know, Tiff is, uh, I, you know, I feel like she's uh, 
well, this people gets me, you know, she, she understands and we work well together. We, we, we have a fun time at work, which is nice. You know, you gotta have a, you gotta have a buddy you can trust at work. Um, she also, I, I don't think she was planning on podcasting this day. So Tiff, I assume you're listening to at least this part of it. Um, I hope, uh, you know, I, I hope this was fun. Um, I don't know, it was, it was an enjoyable conversation, a nice little moment there. So, um, yeah, without any further ado, uh, this is a phone call with, uh, my friend Tiff. Well, Tiff, I, um, you know, this is interesting, right? Like I have this podcast that I do and like, I guess some people at work know about it, you know about it, but like pretty much it's just like a separate world. Have you ever listened to the podcast before? Did I ever like make you listen to an episode? Uh, no, you never made me listen to an episode and I have a couple downloaded, but I still haven't listened to them. Oh, that's fine. You get to them. You get to them. I will. Okay. Let me ask this just to get the ball rolling. What am I like at work? How would you describe me? Um, I would describe you as generally put together. Like it amazes me sometimes how you keep track of details on things. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's a different thing, right? Like I just have a brain that that doesn't forget that right. kind of stuff. Right, but to me, that is part of coping with stress. Like if you're talking about like being able to do that, has to help. It, it helps. I th- I think there's downsides, which <laughs> is that I feel really comfortable improvising in these <laughs> situations where I probably should be better prepared. Okay. How do you do it? I mean, you got a different skill set than me. I don't cope well with stress. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I would say we make a good team. How about that? Okay. Because yes. I got all the answers, but then you are the person who like gets upset with people when justifiably they need to be gotten upset at (laughs) and it's more just like I give you permission to cut loose on them and it seems to take a toll on you but it's a lot of fun for me and it really gets good results I'm bad cop and you yeah yeah, I know you just um you just take a good accounting of situations and um yeah openly honest with people (laughs) I am I don't hide it yeah I don't hide it. And I also, I think (laughs) what also leads to my stress and maybe um, my not being able to cope with it very well is the fact that I see all of the possible ways things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is a a lot of where like our conversations come into is, you know, we're going to do something and I'm like, okay, but here's the nine ways this could possibly go wrong. Have you thought about? Oh, and it's not possibly. It's like they probably plan. will go wrong. Right. Like, right. It's definitely going to happen unless we account for it. Right. And sometimes you've thought about those things and you have plans for those. But I mean, that's a big part of what causes me a lot of stress is because in my head, there is just this constant like, here's all these things. I think like I'm an optimist, right? Like I think things are going to be easier than they are. I think people will get it sooner than they do. I think people will proactively volunteer to help make this thing a success more than they likely are. <laughs> and you and I'm I'm tempered by you going, um, okay, none of this stuff is going to happen accidentally. Like <laughs> we got to account for all of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I think like my plans are made better by being put through that process. And similarly, I think you can be pessimistic about like this shit's all fucked up and it ain't ever going to get better. And I think I do a service for you, which is like, no, nah, we could, we, we, we could do something here. We could get something going and like get a little optimism in the situation. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, I could, you know, here's what's possible. Maybe. No, Maybe. I we'll see. I absolutely agree. We balance each other in, in that aspect. Yeah. I think practically speaking, we're all both like extremely fucking jaded <laughs> as well. And that's, uh, we're, we're, we're realistic. We're, we're realistic about how things work. Oh, for sure. Well, so I, well, what's interesting is that like, cause we don't live in the same place, right? Like, so I work remotely at this company. Mm-hmm. Um, we live, is it hundreds of miles apart? Thousands of miles apart? It's like a thousand miles, right? Probably. I don't know. Um, yeah, I live in the middle of the country. I live on the side. (laughs) So like we have this work relationship and that like, we also, you know, like we, you know, we just shoot the shit and talk and like make, make for enjoyable work time. But we have just like totally separate social lives. Like you've never met Eugenie. 
I just met Dave for the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, And I learned his name was Dave because I'd be calling him Hank (laughs) for like three months before that ever happened. Well, so like, like clue me in a little bit. Like, how do you, you know, it's Friday. It's been a shit week. How do you blow off steam? Uh, Probably go have a drink after work, go to dinner. And then, I don't know, depending on what's going on, it's probably just hanging out and watching TV or if like my friends are getting together, playing board games or just hanging out. I mean, I guess, I don't know, like, you know, it's a podcast, right? Like, I'm trying to find something interesting. But I guess, honestly, like, it's not magic, really. Like, there's no, you know, you overlook it. But just like, yeah, the standard kind of vegging out stuff works really well. Like, it really does the trick. It does. I think the best de-stressing is to just, like, just not be at work and just not thinking about work. (laughs) Like it's just anything that is a distraction from work. So go have a drink or watch some stupid TV show that is just like anything that turns your brain off of thinking about work. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things on my list of, I should start doing this. I think it would be better for me. And they're probably like not that far fetched. Like I just need to work out more and probably do more yoga. Um, I, it's very sporadic, both of those right now. Like I know those things are just good for your mental health. You and I are probably in the same place with yoga, which is that we've gotten to the point with it where we've actually experienced the benefits. But the thought of like, oh, I gotta fucking do the fucking yoga. Yeah, it's like oh, I yeah, gotta, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Cram it in, like cram it in somewhere in my day or like I come home from work and I'm mentally exhausted and the thought of sitting down and doing yoga actually sounds tiring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, am I going to start a new thing and it's going to take like <laughs> half an hour and then like, yeah, well, I- I'll tell you, I think so. Um, And this was a small moment, but it stuck with me at the last TC. Uh, the, so this conference we go to at the last TC, it was the last day and we were hanging out in just like the exhibition area just where all the chairs were. And this girl just like popped up and did a sun salutation. And we both went like, fuck that. You should do that. That seems nice. Like, and then tried to get Glenn and Devin interested. <laughs> and they were not interested in the sun salutation, but just like in the middle of this giant expo hall in new Orleans did a sun salutation. And like, just, I mean, it's like it, the whole operation takes like what, like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Yeah. But yeah, you just feel, feel different. Well, how about this? Let's, uh, Let's wrap this up. I got a, yeah, let's, let's, you want to just knock out a sun salutation real quick? On the phone? Because we'd be better off for it. On the podcast. Yeah, just like, yes, throw throw it on speaker. Okay. Um, I'm going to, hang on. I I have to go into another room where there's carpet. I'm not going to do it on wood floor. Let me, let me go grab my yoga mat. I'll be right back. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so I don't know the names of any of the like positions in between, but we're going to have to call them out or something just so we can stay. Yeah, just make a name for them. I know what you're doing. All right. Um, uh, hands at heart center. And then breathe in. And then hands up. I think it's mountain pose. Exhale. And then arms go down and you kind of bend over, sort of touch your toes. And then hands on knees, you kind of come up a little bit. Okay, and then you go all the way down into a plank, and you kind of rock forward, and take a breath in, and then you do the snaky one. Ah, I love the snaky one. Ah, okay, and then back in the downward facing dog. Ah, how's the downward dog treating you? Fantastic. Oh, I'm so stiff. My calves are too All right, now do a little jump up. All right, and then one last breath in, you kind of come up halfway, and then down all the way, touch your toes, and your feet go up a little bit better. <sighs> all right. I think we just did the first ever live yoga podcast. Does not translate well. No, not really. Although, as you were doing that, I realized I do know a lot more of the names of those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think probably you, you absorb this stuff over time. I just don't do well on the remembering the names part. I kind of like how you described them though. I was better than the real names. Yeah. This snaky pose, foldy one. Yeah. 
You know, one thing I actually started doing, and this is like the joys of working remotely, um, is that like at some point during the day, like basically every day, I'll just knock three of those out, just like between meetings or something like that. Yeah, I always like, I have to make myself get up and walk away from my desk just because now that most of my team is, well, my entire team is remote other than the person that sits next to me. But so I don't go to a lot of meetings. I don't go get up and go to conference rooms. So I don't even get up and walk away from a desk. So I have to schedule time Mm -hmm. on my calendar of just like, get up, walk away from your desk, do like, I will do laps around the office, walk to another floor just so I get up Uh and move. And so, yeah, sometimes I kind of wish I would just go find a space where there is nobody and just do a sun salutation or something just even more. Yeah, just book one of those little conference rooms. It's like should. one of those little two-person conference rooms. I really should. So, yeah, because sitting at a desk in, in an office where you don't move is just terrible. Yeah, a standing desk doesn't fix that. You got to, like, mm-hmm. yeah. go put some laps in. Yep. All right, 20 seconds left. Uh, anything you would like to say to my audience uh, before you go? Um, it's a show that you've never heard before. Yeah, about a video game I've never played. Nope, got nothing for him. Sorry. <laughs> okay, good stuff. See you Monday, Tiff. <laughs> All right. Actually, no, see you Wednesday. Yeah, uh-huh. a couple right, days. Bye. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that is it for this week. Um, I, you know, I didn't mean to do a whole big thing. This thing's what, like 90 minutes plus? Yikes. Uh, you know, you, just, you get on the phone, you talk to people. It's nice. So, uh... Oh, these solo episodes usually come with a little bit of uh, moralizing and finger wagging at the end. So uh, how about this? Hey, uh, go call your mom, right? Or uh, go call your family, right? Go check in. Let them, let, them, let them know you care about them, right? It's probably been a minute. It's it been a minute since I talked to my mom and sister before this episode. So, you know, uh, yeah, go, go, go check in. Um, hey, you know what? Go do a sun salutation. I'll give a, uh, I'll give a link in the show notes. Uh, you don't have to know yoga. You don't have to care. But man, like this is just the perfect all around stretch kind of gets everything all loosened up. It's uh, it's primo. Uh, I, I yeah. If you're sitting at a desk right now or, you know, you got the option, just uh, just nip off for a little bit. Find find some some corner and uh, touch your toes. It'll it'll make you feel better. Um, as always, you've been listening to Crucible Radio. Uh, if you, for some reason, you, you, you want more of this, uh, these these weekly episodes are not enough. Well, I got good news for you. We do a bonus podcast. It's the three of us uh, just shooting the shit, talking about talking about everything but destiny. It's on patreon.com slash crucible radio. It's a buck an episode. And um, hey, they're a lot of fun. We, we, you know, we got a good one coming out this week. I think these uh, this this next one is getting released at the same time. Um, and yeah, man, there's, there's some info in there that's not going to be available for the rest of the world for, for, for some time. So, um, yeah, go check it out. And, uh, as always, uh, I don't really catchphrase. It, this is easier when there's other people around. Um, I guess, yeah, you just sort of run out of steam and that's the end of the show. Uh, okay, so I am, oh shit, I wasn't recording. Fuck. <laughs> it's gonna be. Dude, this one goes into this every I look. This is my first time recording recording phone calls. Okay. okay, okay, I've never done this before. And me saying hello, brother, is not an uncommon way for me to answer the phone. That's that's true. That's true. <laughs> yes, this is what it's like. Oh God. That's why we had it. Ring, 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 ring. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.